Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have not done. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also God. with you. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, gracious Lord, we thank you that your Holy Spirit renews the church in every age. Pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your word. Protect and comfort them in times of trial. Defend them against all the enemies of the gospel. And bestow on the church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another, 
or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We read the song responsibly. God is in our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth be moved, and though the mountains shake in the depths of the sea. Though its waters rage and foam, and though the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be shaken. God shall help it at the break of day. The nations rage and the kingdoms shake. God speaks and the earth melts away. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come now, regard the works of the Lord. What desolations God has brought upon the earth. Behold the one who makes war to cease in all the world, who breaks the bow and shatters the spear and burns the shields with fire. Be still then and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. A reading from Romans. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced, and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law. For through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are now justified by His grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by His blood, effective through faith. He did this to show His righteousness, because in His divine forbearance, he had passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of boasting? It is excluded. By what law? By that of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from works prescribed by the law. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John the Eighth Chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. said to the Jews who, who, be, who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. some belief in him. 
We may assume that some have believed in him but gone the wayside. Still, there are these before him who he encourages to continue in his word, to keep on believing. He tells them if, if, that if they do, if they do, they will know the truth, and the truth will set them free. Freedom is a somewhat nebulous word, though. Clearly, in this text, those with whom Jesus is speaking do not understand the kind of Jesus, the kind of freedom of which Jesus speaks. I dare say they don't understand freedom at all. They retort, what do you mean? We've never been slaves to anyone. We are descendants of Abraham. It seems that their attention to history is lacking, and even their attention to the present state as free people. It seems they forget their slavery in Egypt, the exile, and even ignore their present state of oppression under Roman rule. Here in the United States in the 21st century, we enjoy many freedoms, and we even call ourselves the land of the free. And yet many segments of our, our society define freedom in different ways, and differing segments of society would define, define enslavement in different ways. And I'm not even speaking of those who are enslaved or held captive by, say, the sex slave trade, or by disenfranchisement or addiction or physical or mental abuse or bodies that are feeling them and trapping them. You know the term, it's a vicious cycle. It's actually a sort of technical term used in economics to explain a chain of events that continue to reinforce themselves in a cycle or circle that spirals in its negative results. You may be less familiar with the term virtuous cycle or positive cycle. This is used to explain how economic growth happens when events, economic growth happens when events or actions lead to improvement and feed off each other as they repeat in a virtual or positive cycle. Most of us, however, are likely, more likely with the term vicious cycle as it pertains to some personal experience and not economic theories. Usually the experience of someone we know and is near to us. You know, it's a vicious cycle. Perhaps you've used it yourself when you've witnessed someone spiraling out of control or known a period even in your own life where you have done the same. My favorite novel is Crime and Punishment. Anybody ever read Crime and Punishment? Barb, you've never read Crime and Punishment. <laughs> In the end, the character Raskolnikov is a poverty-stricken former student refusing help from those who care for him and rather formulates a plan to kill an unscrupulous pawnbroker in order to steal money. Throughout the novel, faced with his crime, his sin, in a vicious cycle of deception, he spirals. The vicious cycle of deception covers his own deception. He spirals into the depths of anguish caused by the fear of reality of what he has done and of what will happen, what he fears will happen if he confesses to the crime. He ultimately does confess. And even while having left a trail of desolation, he ultimately, he begins himself to heal. He begins that healing through the loving influence of Sonia, a blemished woman, but one of Christian virtue. She's the woman who encouraged his confession. 
And even while he is sentenced to penal servitude for his crime, Raskolnikov caught finds some sense of freedom. Some sense of freedom by Sonia's friendship and Christian love. Many of us are able to cite stories of people who have been free, who have been spiraling out of control, and somehow were able to grasp hold and return to themselves and be free of whatever it was, their addiction or whatever. And while we're able to cite instances of men or women or of people being free, while we may cite our own freedom of speech, for instance, or freedom to practice religion, or freedom to bear arms as an example of real freedom, there are still many and widely opposing views and platforms that define what freedom or, or captivity are in this land where we sing that freedom bring. And they can't all be correct. At least they can't all be correct for all people. There is lack of clarity, and this lack of clarity about what freedom is is compounded by the reality that those who hold varying views don't seem to want to be reconciled to each other. In the midst of it all, in the midst of deceit or disenfranchisement or addiction or abuse, in the midst of schism, an unwillingness to work together for the good of all the people, the center of all of it, in its very core, there is one thing, one thing responsible for our captivity and our inability to truly understand freedom. And that one thing is sin. And there's only one thing there's only one thing that relieves us from our captivity and will make us free. And that is God's abundant grace for those who continue in his word, who have faith in Christ Jesus, Christ Jesus who came, who died, who was raised and ascended, and who is coming again for us. And this gift of faith is given as we continue in this given faith in Christ Jesus, Jesus Christ will make us free. I have to tell you while I teach about it, and I preach about it every week, I have not the capacity to comprehend, truly comprehend, the boundless, boundless freedom Yet as we gather each week, continuing in our faith, we are continually formed in such a way as to have a clearer understanding of the freedom of which Jesus speaks. As we gather and sing a hymn that expresses this freedom, well, don't sing the hymn today. But as we gather and we read the words of this hymn, this hymn that expresses this freedom in a way that moves some of us to tears. There are the words of our hymn. For they to take our house, goods, honor, child, and spouse, though life be wrenched away. They cannot win the day. The kingdom is ours forever. a little glimpse, a little glimpse of that freedom. And there's a great big glimpse of that freedom as you meet with your brothers and sisters here, who even while they may confound you at times, even while they may confound you, they will support you and lift you up and pray for you and encourage you in the word. You experience in their support a glimpse of that freedom as we receive the Lord's Supper, which we will begin to next week. 
the body and blood of Christ, we receive a taste of that freedom. And as we are then broken up to go forth our separate ways and share the good news in the world, we are continually being formed by that death which glorifies God and gives us new life, truth, and brings us closer to grasping that freedom of which Jesus speaks. As we live out our faith in the world that surrounds us each day, no matter how great or small that faith may be, great or small as you may feel it is today, we are brought close to comprehending that freedom we will know as we are finally freed from the bondage which is this earthly life. This is a virtuous cycle. When we continue in God's Word, Jesus Christ, when we read and ponder upon God's Word in the Holy Scripture, when we embrace the freedom of the truth that we can do nothing, and we don't have to do it to earn this freedom, that we are reconciled to God not by our ability to win the day here on earth, but by the gift of faith given. Continuing a life in faith in Christ, we are perpetuating that virtuous cycle which leads us ever heavenward in a fountain of water springing forth to eternal life in which we shall know what it is to be truly free. Indeed. Amen.
Together with the whole church, we confess our faith, the faith in which we are about. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, the Lord's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered from the virtuous Father, who was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the heaven.
thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right to give our thanks and praise. Let us pray. Then your spirit of truth, O God, rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of the world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.